Good afternoon, everyone. Just a couple of things at the top, and then I'll get right to your questions. Yesterday, Secretary Austin welcomed Singapore Minister of Defense Ng to the Pentagon for a bilateral meeting during which they reaffirmed the longstanding defense partnership between the United States and Singapore. The two leaders discussed opportunities to expand bilateral force posture cooperation and the importance of expanding joint training and interoperability. The officials emphasized the strength of U.S.-Singapore collaboration on emerging technologies as demonstrated by the signing of a U.S.-Singapore Statement of Intent for Data, Analytics, and Artificial Intelligence Cooperation by the U.S. Chief Digital and Arti Artificial Intelligence Officer and the Singapore Deputy Secretary for Technology. Secretary Austin and Minister Ng reaffirmed their commitment to advancing the historic momentum in the U.S.-Singapore Defense Partnership and, share, and a shared vision for a free and open Indo-Pacific region. Readout of the call has been posted to defense.gov. Finally, I know many of you have been following the status of the JLOTS humanitarian mission or temporary pier. This time, the temporary pier remains in Ashdod and a potential re-anchoring date has not been set. As we've said, the pier has always been intended as a temporary solution and it will conclude its mission soon. But as of today, I don't have any announcements to make in terms of when the mission will officially conclude. Very aware of the press and public interest and we'll be sure to provide updates as appropriate. And with that, happy to take your questions. We'll go to AP Lita. Thank you, Pat. Pat, do you know if there is any U.S. military involvement at all in Ashdod as they try to get more aid in through that port? Is there any U.S. involvement at all in any of that? Um, so we'll have more details to follow in terms of uh, you know, next steps. As far as Ashdod goes, as you know, we have a convoy management board uh, that's situated there um, with Lieutenant General Frank. Um, in terms of U.S. military presence at Ashdod, in terms of accepting aid, moving it, I'm not aware of any uh, any activity at the moment, uh, other than to say, uh, again, you know, we, we are aware that aid has moved through Ashdod and, and uh, we have delivered aid to Ashdod for onward distribution. Um, but again, we'll, we'll have more details to provide for you in the future. Just on, just on that point, has the aid, is there any aid on the floating dock that is offshore of Gaza or has all of that aid been delivered now to Ashdod? Um, I, I'd have to take that question. I don't okay. know the answer to that. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, two questions. One, during the NATO summit in Washington, Prime Minister Narendra Modi of India was in Moscow meeting and greeting with the President Putin of uh, Russia. They have discussed uh, so many issues between India and Russia, including military pact and also situation in the Middle East war going on and also of course uh, Russia and Ukraine war and Prime Minister Modi offered many uh, options there and both leaders that this war in the Middle East should be end because it's in interest of India of course in many ways and also at the same time war in between Russia and Ukraine also in the interest of uh, India to end this war also. So where do we go from there? NATO was meeting here and they were meeting there at the same time. And where do we stand as far as US, India, military to military relations into this connection also? Yeah. Um, well, as you heard me say last week, uh, you know, India is a strategic partner and we look forward to continuing to develop that partnership. When it comes to Ukraine uh, and Russia's illegal occupation and invasion of Ukraine, uh, ultimately, at the end of the day, it's up to Ukraine to decide, uh, you know, when they are ready to uh, to negotiate for peace. And right now, our focus continues to be on working with Ukraine to provide them with what they need to defend their country uh, and, and defend their sovereignty and take back territory. Uh, but they're, you know, at the end of the day, uh, you know, there's no decisions about Ukraine without Ukraine. So, and, and second, mm -hmm. sorry, second, sir. If a lawmaker or senator acting as a foreign agent of the United States and have been found guilty by the New Jersey Grand Jury, 
uh, Senator Bob Menendez is now. As far as the military connection, because he was found guilty in connection with those countries that he was acting as foreign agent, they, those countries have military to military relations with the United States. So in any way that uh, this building or military to military relations will be uh, affected in any way because of a guilty yeah, as, as it relates to Senator Menendez, I don't have anything to provide. I'd refer you to Department of Justice on that. Thanks. Carla? Uh, thanks. Um, just first to follow up on the situation with the pier, uh, are there any additional airdrops going on, or does DOD assess that there's still a great need for humanitarian assistance? Is there anything going on in the interim while we're waiting for the pier? Yeah, I don't, I don't have anything to announce at the moment in terms of airdrops. Of course, that's a capability that we maintain. Um, but but nothing to announce specifically on that. When it comes to humanitarian assistance for Gaza, uh, we know that that there is an urgent need for humanitarian assistance. Of course, USAID is the lead for the U.S. government in terms of working with the international community, and the, the DOD is supporting their efforts. So we'll continue, obviously, to maintain close contact, as we have all along with USAID, uh, on that front to ensure that we're doing our part to support those efforts. Okay, okay thanks, Matt. And then just a couple questions on the country of Georgia. Um, following Noble Partner being canceled, are there any other cancellations? Has every mill-to-mill -mill operation been put on hold for the time being? Um, there's supposed to be some sort of celebration at the end of August. Is that has that been put on hold? Can you give us any other updates? Yeah, I'm not. I'm not tracking any other cancellations at this time. Okay, and then I guess does DoD see Georgia still as a U.S. friendly ally, or does it see it moving towards Russia at this point? Yeah, I mean we'll continue to partner uh, with Georgian Defense Forces, uh, and we'll continue to look for ways to strengthen Georgia's ability to safeguard its sovereignty and maintain its territorial integrity. The, the decision to cancel the exercise was not taken lightly. Um, we place great consideration on the extensive value that allies and partners add to exercises such as Noble Partner. Um, and so we're going to continue to look forward to future opportunities uh, to cooperate with allies and partners. So I'll leave it there. Uh, let me go to Constantine. Thanks, Pat. Um, so uh, CNN is reporting that uh, Remnants of two U.S.-made munitions were used in an Israeli missile strike on Sunday on a school in central Gaza. Does the Pentagon have a reaction or comment to that report? I mean, I've seen the press reports, but I'd have to refer you to Israel to talk about their operations. Okay. And just more broadly, this isn't the first time that reports like this have come out. Um, you know, does the Pentagon leadership feel like it's doing, doing an adequate job of making sure that the weapons we give Israel are not used in incidents such as this? Well, look, I mean, we've been very clear uh, to our Israeli partners uh, on our view as it relates to mitigating civilian harm. And I, th I think there's something I would hope we could all agree on. This war is undoubtedly tragic. Way too many civilians have died. Uh, it's heartbreaking to see the images that we see. Um, and that's, I think, a reason, a main reason why you see the U.S. government working so hard to, uh, to obtain a ceasefire. Uh, between the, the factions that are that are fighting here. Um, when it comes to the IDF operations, we continue to urge them both publicly and privately to uh, take civilian harm mitigation into account. We know that they need to do more on this front, and we're going to continue to communicate that to them. I, I would also say, though, that Hamas bears some responsibility for this as well, in the, in the sense that they continue to embed among the civilian population. Um, and if they truly cared uh, about the Palestinian population, one has to ask why they continue to build command and control nodes, barracks, armories, tunnels underneath the city, uh, and put themselves in places uh, where there's active military operations. Um, so I'll just leave it there. Jenny. Thank you, General. Uh, I have two questions. Uh, at the U.S. and South Korea summit last week, the two countries issued a joint statement on nuclear deterrence and approval of nuclear operational guidelines. Does the approval of nuclear operational guidelines refer to new guidelines that will enable the U.S. and South Korea to jointly respond to nuclear weapons in an emergency situation on the Korean Peninsula? 
Um, well, I, I think, again, uh, you know, our alliance with the Republic of Korea is ironclad, and we've been very clear uh, that when it comes to extended deterrence, uh, the United States uh, it makes available all of its capability to support uh, the defense of the Republic of Korea. Uh, of course, uh, this is a defensive alliance. We're not seeking to uh, go to war, obviously, in the region, and we're seeking regional security and stability, and that will continue to be our, our focus. Thank you. And uh, under China, China and Russia are conducting joint maritime exercise, including live fire. Do you see this as a training aimed at the RIMPEC exercise? Um, I'll let them speak to the rationale behind their exercises. It's, of course, something that we uh, monitor closely and will continue to do so. Let me go to the phone here real quick. Heather uh, from USNI. Hi, thank you so much. Um, so USS Dwight D. Eisenhower just returned from a nine-month deployment that everyone is calling um, unprecedented. So uh, two questions. Based on what you're seeing or what the Pentagon has seen since um, February of 2021, does the Secretary of Defense uh, uh, predict that these extended deployments are going to become the norm? Um, and then if so, uh, and based on what's already been happening, what uh, resources is the Pentagon offering the Navy in order to um, bolster up resilience among sailors who are stuck on a ship for nine months? Yeah, thanks, Heather. So I, I won't you know, speculate or get into hypotheticals about uh, the duration of deployments. I mean, as you know, the military, the U.S. military maintains a wide variety of capabilities that enable us to respond to a wide variety of contingencies around the world. In other words, we, we are able to surge assets to where they're needed most uh, to support our national security interests and our obligations around the world. And so uh, in, in the Red Sea area right now, uh, we continue to see Houthi aggression impacting the innocent lives of mariners and the freedom of navigation through that important waterway. So we'll continue to work with the international community uh, toward that end. Uh, and as for Navy personnel, uh, you know, uh, confident that Navy leadership will continue to look at uh, doing everything it needs to do to take care of our sailors and their families as they conduct these important missions around the world. Let me go to Jeff Shogel, Task and Purpose. Uh, thank you. The Coast Guard recently rescued Dave Portnoy, founder of uh, Barstool Sports. And I was wondering if any DOD assets were involved in the rescue, like satellites, SEAL teams, aircraft? Uh, thanks very much, Jeff. I, I will have to take that question. I don't have any information on that. All right, let's come back to the room here. Yeah, I'll come to you and then to Tony. Thank you, sir. Jahazai from Airway News TV, Pakistan. Yesterday, eight Pakistani soldiers were killed and dozens of them injured in, in a terrorist attack. A terrorist organization affiliated with the Tariq Taliban Pakistan claimed the responsibility. Do you have any comments? Any condolences about that? Um, well, certainly our, our thoughts and prayers are with the, the families of those soldiers that were, were lost. Uh, I know that, that as we've talked about in the past, um, Pakistan uh, is in a tough fight at times when it comes to fighting terrorists in the region. Uh, and so certainly sad to, to hear that. Um, you know, when it comes to counterterrorism, the U.S. And, and Pakistan have worked together in the past, and we continue to uh, discuss ways that we can work together. Uh, and so I'll just leave it there. So the Pakistani government and Pakistani military is, is asking for uh, U.S. support. Pakistani military is asking for a modern macro weapons to deal with the situation because according to them, uh, all the terrorists in Afghanistan are using American weapons left by U.S. forces. I know U.S. forces left those weapons for Afghan forces, but somehow they are in the hands of terrorists right now. So are you going to consider to provide modern macro weapons to Pakistan? Yeah, I don't, I don't have anything to announce. Uh, as you know, uh, we do maintain a, a security cooperation relationship with Pakistan. And so uh, I'm, I'm sure that those discussions are happening uh, via those mechanisms to look at Pakistan's requirements and, and what the U.S. can do uh, to support. So, so. Have a last question. Uh, so it is about the assassination attempt on President Trump. Um, I don't know if uh, U.S. military is involved in the investigations, but do you think that any foreign country involved in this kind of uh, assassination attempt to create disturbance in this country? We have uh, watching a lot of news stories uh, on the media 
that may be any foreign country because we recently have seen that a foreign government and foreign intelligence agencies involved in the assassination attempt on U.S. citizens here in New York and uh, also in Canada. So do you think that any foreign country can this? Yeah, I mean, it, as it relates to uh, the attempted assassination of former President Trump, um, I, I would point you to Secretary Austin's statement over the weekend condemning the violence has absolutely no place in our democracy. As it relates to that uh, attempt, I'd have to refer you to the FBI and the Secret Service for any questions on, on the investigation. Uh, that maybe yeah, I've seen those reports. Um, I'd have to refer you to, to DHS or DOJ for any questions on that. Thank you. Tony. A couple hardware questions. The uh, House Oversight and Accountability Chairman today wrote Secretary Austin demanding V-22 accident documents going back a couple of years, two, three years. Uh, he's, he's threatening subpoena if they're not uh, if they're not produced. This has been a long-running controversy with that subcommittee. D do you have any comment on that in terms of providing documentation that the committee is asking for on this highly controversial aircraft? Yeah, well, first of all, I'd, I would just say up front that the department remains committed to the safety, health, and the well-being of all of our service members. Um, we have worked uh, very hard to accommodate the House's, the House Oversight Committee's requests. Um, we've provided more than 3,500 pages of documents. In addition, representatives from the V-22 Joint Program Office and the military departments provided a briefing to committee staff in March, and the department made multiple officials, including the Commander of Naval Air Systems Command, available to testify at the committee's hearing last month on the safety of the V-22 Osprey. Um, all that to say, we will continue to work with the committee to accommodate their requests, uh, and we will continue to do everything we can to ensuring the safety of all of our aircraft platforms, including the V-22 Osprey. Uh, and less contentious, a uh, hypersonic weapons question. Last week at the NATO summit, the White House and uh, NATO put out a statement saying that starting in 2026, the U.S. is uh, army. The army's uh, multi-domain task force will start uh, uh, fielding long-range fires to include the de now developmental hypersonic weapon that the U.S. is uh, working on. On June 28th, you put out a press release saying that the weapon successfully completed what they call an end-to-end -end test. My question is this, how close is this weapon to being deemed operationally suitable for production and eventual fielding? Will there be more tests or was this the one big one that it had to pass for a graduation? Yeah, so um, with regards to hypersonics, we will continue to develop a range of hypersonic based programs. Uh, we'll work to accelerate development and testing uh, on these programs. As you highlight, the Navy and the Army did recently complete a flight test of a hypersonic missile from the Pacific Missile Range in Hawaii. Uh, that test provided data on the performance of the conventional prompt strike and the long-range hypersonic weapon. Um, for reasons of operation security, I'm not going to be able to get into details on future tests. Um, I will say, though, that we remain committed to developing these hypersonic capabilities that support the national defense strategy. Yeah, you guys have spent like $12 billion over the last five years trying to develop this capability. You can't say whether this was the graduation test or whether there will be subsequent tests to prove it out more. What I would say is that the test marked a step forward for those programs, uh, and I'll just have to leave it at that. Not a graduation, but a step forward. I'll just a step forward, leave Thank it you. at that. Thank you, sir. Thank you, General. Um, regarding to the uh, escalation of the border of uh, Lebanon, um, do you still believe uh, that uh, escalation could lead uh, to the wider war? Do you have still these concerns? And um, do you think that the politic or diplomatic solution is still uh, exist? And what's your message to the both parties there? Well, sure. Uh, I mean, I think uh, that dip a diplomatic solution does remain possible. Uh, so far, we have not seen a wider regional conflict. Um, tensions do obviously remain along the Israel-Lebanon uh, border, and so uh, we continue to stay in constant communication uh, with um, with. Uh, Lebanon, Israel, uh, and others in the region to ensure that, that, that this does not become a broader conflict. Of course, the, the concern here is the risk of miscalculation, which could spark a wider conflict that no one wants. So uh, we'll continue to stay very focused on that. And, and General, do you believe that the NCS fire deal uh, could be reflected in a positive way? 
to that escalation at this, at this area exactly? Uh, well, it's it's difficult to uh, get into hypotheticals or speculate, um, but I think, again, uh, what we would like to see is a, a ceasefire in Gaza uh, so that we can restore calm and we can start to get humanitarian assistance in there. Uh, certainly, I, I think that would contribute uh, to uh, more positive outcomes in the region and a reduction of tension. So, um, again, we'll continue to work toward that end. Let me go to Charlie. Welcome to the briefing room, Charlie. Thank you, General. Um, if I understood correctly, you mentioned a word about re-anchoring the pier at the top of today's session. Uh, sources tell us what's actually being discussed is pulling the plug and dismantling the pier, and that may happen in the next couple of days. Where are we on that decision making? Yeah, what I, what I said was that uh, a potential re-anchoring date has not been set. And we've said all along that this is going to be temporary uh, and that it will conclude its mission soon. But as of today, I don't have any announcements to make in terms of when the mission will officially conclude. And when we do have information in that regard, we'll certainly be sure to let you all know. There's no window you can estimate? Well, window. no, I, I don't have a window other than soon. You know, and, and part of the discussion, of course, here is taking into account weather states, taking into account uh, the requirement to deliver humanitarian assistance. Um, again, uh, the, the most specific I can get right now is uh, we anticipate that the mission will conclude soon. I just, I don't have a date to give you right now. 